I am in a stage of extreme comfort. So go get comfortable and come back to watch this video. I'll wait. Do you do it? Hello, shiny bays. Hello, besties. I am so thankful for you. Happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate. Happy Thursday to those who don't. I am just going to go through some books I'm thankful for that I read this year. I did a part one to this video um, last year, so you can go watch that. I'll put it in the description. And in that part, I talked about most of my favorite books. I already know one of you is going to be like, where's the Dick to Calloway? I didn't read it this year, so therefore it is not in this video. This is just from books I've read in 2022. If you wanna go see part one, like I said, I'll put it in the description. This is just a fun little, I'm thankful for these books video, which leads me to the point that I'm not going to be going into details about these books because all of these I've talked about nonstop. So you guys know about them already. I don't wanna bore you. I don't wanna waste your time. I'm just gonna be telling you why I'm thankful for these books. But most importantly, I'm thankful for you, not just today, but every single day. I love you so, so much, Shadi Bay. These are in no specific order, let me just say. I literally just piled up books that I read this year that I am very thankful for and I'm just gonna be discussing. Before I start, search of trigger warnings for all of these books. I don't even know where to start. Where should I start? So I'm gonna start with my underrated favorites, and that's these three right here. We've got Meet Me Halfway by Lillian T. James. We've got Flawless by Elsie Silver, and One Person of You by Michelle Gross. One Person of You is Single Mom, Grumpy Sunshine, Tattoo Parlor Owner. It literally was a book that got me out of a really bad reading slump. I did not wanna read anything, and I picked this up on Kindle, and it just, was incredible. I adored every second of it. Flawless is a bull rider and a woman who gets tasked to um, babysit him, basically. I loved this, did not expect to love this as much as I did, but it kind of kickstarted my like cowboy vibe romance obsession because yeehaw, you know what I mean? And Meet Me Halfway, if you guys are fans of Wait For It by Mariana Zapata, I guarantee you will love this book. It is a lot of the same tropes, a lot of the same vibes. It is also single mom, also grumpy sunshine, a little bit of slow burn as well. This book was so fucking cute. All three of these I would say are pretty underrated in my opinion. So if you haven't read these for sure, go pick them up. Um, I highly recommend. Now I'm gonna go into three of my favorite sports romances of this year. I love sports romances and these three were just, all three of them I rated five stars. That's how you know. So we've got Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. We've got Mile High by Liz Tom Ford. And we have Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. Icebreaker is a hockey player and an ice skater. Mile High is also a hockey player and the flight attendant on his team's plane. And then Say You Swear is a football player. Say You Swear is college. Mile High is professional hockey. And then Icebreaker is also college. You have a little bit of everything with these three. And I could not recommend these enough. If you're in the mood for a sports romance, y'all, pick up one of these. I am so be right back. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm so beyond thankful for all of these. My three favorite sports romances of the year. Did I mention that already? Now, of course, I have to talk about my babies. The Twisted series by Anna Huang. Twisted Hate and Twisted Lies are the ones I read this year. Twisted Love and Twisted Games I read last year. I love these. Both of these were five stars for me. Both of these were my favorites in the Twisted series. Josh and Jules were the first couple to just get me in the Twisted series. They are so different than the other couples. He's a doctor. She's a lawyer. They're both so powerful. I adore this book. And Twisted Lies can do no wrong. It can do no wrong. Christian and Stella are everything. This was everyone's most anticipated read of the Twisted series. I'm gonna go ahead and speak for everyone. Well, I'm gonna speak for me. I wasn't disappointed. The Twisted Hate and Twisted Lies, I am so thankful for the entire Twisted universe and all the joy that it has brought me, but especially these two. Going for a completely different vibe here, y'all. The Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. I love this series with everything inside me. There are five books inside this one. It's The Risk, Sidetracted, Scarlet Angel, All the Lies, and Painted All Red and all of them are like 100 to 200 pages each. So you get through them pretty quick. If you want a romance with mystery, with darkness and with heartbreak, but also a lot of love, and if you wanna fall in love with a main character, please read the Mindfuck series. I am so thankful Lana Myers stumbled into my life. I'm so thankful that I stumbled into Lana Myers' life. There you go, it's her universe. I'm just living in it. Um, this next one is a little bit debatable because listen, you guys all saw me cry a lot to this book. So you're probably gonna be thinking, hey, Larry, are you really thankful for it? And listen, I am kind of a thousand boy kisses, Tilly Cole. Um, will I ever open this book again? No. Poppy and Rune somehow touched my soul in ways I cannot describe. I will never forget it. All the pain that it caused me, it was worth it because the story is so fucking beautiful. I learned a lot with Poppy and the way she lives life. And I don't know, I feel like this book taught me a lot of lessons that I wasn't expecting to learn, nor was I ready, but I was just thrown in there. Yeah, let me let me put this away and never look at it again. <sighs> 
Binding and Keeping 13, Chloe Walsh. Could not recommend these two books more. I love the found family. I love Johnny. I love Shannon. Your heart breaks for these characters, but you just want to see them happy, honestly. And all the other side characters in these books too, you grow to love them so much. It was one of those books that even though you were reading about one couple, you were only reading from Johnny and Shannon's POV, you still fell for all the characters just the same. It is very, very heavy, so be prepared. I am so thankful for Binding and Keeping 13, y'all. This was one of the best moments of my life, was reading these books. That's dramatic, but I'm being serious. Speaking of best moments of my life, Grip Trilogy, Kennedy Ryan. I already know you guys are tired of me holding these up, but read it, and then maybe I'll stop saying it. Flow, grip, still. Read it in order. If you want a series that is so, so deeply romantic and amazing, but also with such important topics, the Grip Trilogy. Only go into it when you're prepared for something very heavy, because you know, Kennedy Ryan just likes to, likes to give you a lot of pain, but with such amazing stories and happily ever afters. Grip is one of my favorite fictional men of the year for sure. In this series, I will never forget it. Grip Trilogy, could not be more thankful for that. Completely different vibe here, y'all. I just listened to this book and it is life-changing. I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. This one is such a different vibe from all the other books I've shown because all of them are fiction. Most of them are romance, but this one is a memoir. So, you know, not the same whatsoever. It's my first memoir ever and I listened to it. She narrated it. It was amazing and I'm just so happy Jeanette is doing what she wants now and she's writing and I will read anything else she writes. I'm glad my mom died. I'm glad I read this book. This is gonna come to no one's shock but Dirty Air series by Lauren Asher. I specifically want to say thank you to Wrecked and Redeemed because wow. I have no words really. I love these. I'm so thankful for them. Yes, thank you Lauren Asher. <laughs> okay, I went a little bit heavy with the <laughs> latest couple reads, so let me go for something very light. The Semi Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. Yes, I only read this now. I know what you're thinking. Larissa, what the fuck? Usually people read this in middle school. Yeah, not me though. Not I. Wrong bitch. I read this now and I regret nothing. It was so fluffy. It was so fun. It literally was one of those that I just wasn't even thinking about anything. It just distracted me from anxiety and from life. And that's exactly what you want in books, you know? The reason why I'm so thankful for this series specifically is because after I read it, the show came out and I got to watch the show and experience it. And I got to experience it with my friends and like see how everybody was really just loving the semi turn pretty. It kind of felt like we were all in this together. And it was just such a fun fucking time. Like I look back on it and it just makes me smile. The semi turn pretty. I'm thankful for the part this played and who I am as a person. Wow, this is really dramatic. I never claimed that I wasn't dramatic. Yes. Going back to some heaviness, the mixtape by Brittany Cherry. The romance was very, very minimal in this book, but just the story of both of the characters really, really touched me. I loved it and I was cheering for them so much and I really wanted them to get their happy ending and grow up, not even together. Like it was one of the first times that I wasn't even that focused on the romance because I really loved the characters. I just wanted them to be happy. So many of the quotes in this book just, got to me. A lot of the times I just sat there and I was like, wow, that was life-changing. To keep things light once more, I've got Juniper Hill and Letters to Molly by Devaney Perry. These are two of my favorite Devaney Perry books ever. I'm very thankful for them because just in general, Devaney Perry became one of my favorite authors and these are the best. I rated both of them five stars. Letters to Molly's Marriage in Trouble, Marriage of Conciliation kind of vibe. And Juniper Hill's Single Mom, Forced Proximity. Both of them are small town, Devaney Perry, Queen of Small Town. I'm so thankful for both of these and I'm so thankful for Devaney Perry existing on this earth at the same time as me. How to be dramatic. Dramatic, a story by Larissa Kimson. Of course, I have to mention this one, Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. This is a dark romance and it is probably my favorite dark romance of all time. Another five-star read of mine. It was one of those that I picked up randomly on Kindle one day. And now here we are. It is one of my favorite reads ever. It follows two people who are kidnapped together. So this book is very, very heavy. There is a lot of triggers in it. And if you're down to feel a lot of emotions and to be very sad, but then to get a happy ending and Still Beating, Jennifer Hartman in general, she has very heavy books. Lotus is another one that I really they really like, but still beating will remain my number one. I've got three more little standalones I want to talk about. The Bride Test, The Worst Best Man, and Before We Were Strangers. Before We Were Strangers is by Renee Carlino. In this book, it was just the aesthetic that gets me. Every time I think about this book, it brings me back to that time that I read it, and I can vividly picture everything that happens in it. And it's very rare that I can do that with a book when I just look at it and I remember exactly the scenes that happened in the book. This was one of those. It's not even like the book was life-changing for me or anything like that, 
but it was just such a good time to read it. It is Strangers to Friends to Lovers and it does have time jumps so you get past present. That is all I will say. The Worst Best Man, Mia Sosa, this one, the Brazilian representation made me so fucking happy. That is why I'm so thankful for it. Just seeing a book with a Brazilian MC doesn't happen very often to me so this made me so, so happy. And this book was just a perfect rom-com. It was so funny but also so cute and romantic and there was spice in it too. It had everything I could ever want and my Brazilian self was so fucking happy reading it and seeing my culture sprinkled on throughout this entire book. So very thankful for that. Very thankful for Mia Sosa. And The Bride Test, Helen Huang. I've told you how much I love this book. It is my favorite book in the Kiss Quotient trilogy. They're all standalone so you can read it separately but it's The Kiss Quotient, The Bride Test, and The Heart Principle and this one is my favorite and it is the most underrated one in the series. Yes, thank you Helen Huang for The Bride Test. Next I have Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This is my first Abby Jimenez book and it did not disappoint. It's opposites attract. It's reverse age gap. It's small town. It gave everything it needed to give. It's my my first Abby Jimenez book, but it will not be my last. This next one is a book I feel like everyone should be required to read. Therefore, I am requiring you to read it. Seven Days in June, Tia Williams. I don't even know what to thank this book for because I thank it for everything. <laughs> I love this so much. It was such a heavy read, but in the most beautiful way. If you have a heartbeat, read this book. You're required, like I said. Um, I'm so thankful for this series, but listen, it's not over yet, so we don't have a happy ending yet. The Magnolia Parks Universe by Jessa Hastings. It, it is one of my favorite reads of the year. You literally go into this universe pretty blindly, and I would recommend doing it that way because I did, and I had the time of my life. Like, reading these was the time of my life. I love you. I love you so much. Then I have the Hoop Trilogy by Kennedy Ryan. Long shot, block shot, hook shot. Long shot is one of the heaviest reads ever. So do not expect any cute, fluffy sports romance from these, but these books are amazing. I'm very thankful for the entire Hoops trilogy. Give me back my girlhood, it was mine first. And I damn sure never would have danced with the devil. Lastly, last up I've got Sophie Lark. These are the ones I read this year. I read the Sinners Duet last year and that is still one of my faves ever. But this is the Brutal Birthright series and the Kingmaker series. I put the entire thing in here because I love both of them so much. Brutal Birthright is a mafia romance and then Kingmakers is the mafia kids going to school. So it's the kids from this series going to school all together like a mafia Hogwarts. Yes, some of my favorite mafia books ever. So if you are brand new to mafia, I would say it's a great start. If you're brand new to dark romance, I would say it's a great start. Just in general, read Sophie Lark. It is the perfect mix of plot with spice and with incredible characters, badass women, and protective men. What more do you need? Those are all the books I wanted to talk about today, Shadi Bays. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Just thank you for being my friends. Thank you for being my Shadi Bays. I love you all so, so much. You are all my friends to me. Like you literally are my best friends. I don't have many friends. You're it. No pressure. But anyway, these are books I'm thankful for. Like I said, these are just from the ones I've read this year. So go watch part one if you want to see from the ones I read last year. And let me know any other videos you want to see. But I love you so much. And again, happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate and happy Thursday to those who don't. I love you entirely. I don't even really celebrate. I don't like, I don't do anything. I just stay here on Thanksgiving. It's just like any other day, but. But it felt like a good excuse to make this video. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm rambling. I love you so much. Goodbye. <laughs>